Diane from Teach Pre-K. The day is finally here. My entire classroom decor kit um, is in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. And from now until Labor Day, it will be $5. After Labor Day, it's gonna go to 15 or 20, depending if I add anything else to it. Um, right now I'm thinking 15, but I am gonna do a little call out for if there's anything I'm missing, if there's anything you would like. Anytime I edit or add anything, it is yours for free. You just have to re-download on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, I believe there will be at least one back to school sale for Teachers Pay Teachers sometime between now and Labor Day is all I know. And um, I will not be offering this at a discounted price because it's already going to be so inexpensive and you get so much. One little thing I want you guys to know is when you download this, you only have to print the pages you want. There are over 400 pages, maybe even close to 500 pages, but that's only because I made so many of the same things in every single color that you can imagine. So if a sign has um, like a specific color border around it, I did it in every color for um, just classroom posters and things like that. So you can choose which color you want and you have a lot of options. So don't waste all that paper, don't waste all that ink, only print out what you want. If you're gonna put it on a thumb drive and take it to uh, Kinko's or something, make sure that you just list the pages that you want printed out or laminated or whatever they're gonna do for you. That way you won't be having them print out, you know, 500, 600 pages worth of stuff and have a whole bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily need. Um, I'm going to show you just a little sample of every single thing that's included. Um, this is all done in PowerPoint, so there are two editable files. Um, the editable placemats, which come in every single color. So if I have sent you the uh, placemat templates in the past, I sent you two colors. This has every color of the rainbow plus black. Um, so that is editable and the classroom labels are all editable. I'm also including a folder of school supply pictures if you want to add that to your label and there will be a tutorial on how to use all that at the end of this video. There's going to be a couple different tutorials so you know exactly what to do. And I'm also going to include the link to this video in the product so if you've got it up on your screen you can just click it and you should be able to get there um i am also including a folder that has the kg red hands font link so if you are using powerpoint you need to close out powerpoint after you load the font and reopen it again in order for the font to be available in your font book if you're on a Mac or whatever font program you have. So you always have to close it out and open it again. I had the hardest time with that when I first started using PowerPoint for things. If you don't have PowerPoint, find out from your school if it's a program that you can load onto your computer because I do everything in PowerPoint. PowerPoint's great. I do lots of stuff in Canva too, but for um, editable products and stuff to send to other people. I find that PowerPoint just works best for me. Okay, so I am going to start with the editable products first and I'll show you what you get. Um, you guys have seen the placemats. Here is the placemat in purple and here it is in green. You get every single color of the rainbow in this kit and there will be a text box where you can download this specific font if you want it. I just like it because it's chunky, bold, and really clear print, and that works really well for young children who are just learning their letters. But if you have another print font that you like, please go ahead and use it. You don't have to download that font. But there will be a text box that you can just start typing, and I have written instructions and I'll do a tutorial on this too, because all you have to do is, if you've got PowerPoint, is duplicate the slide and wait until all of them are finished and you've changed the names in everyone, and then you can print everything 
one time or you can do one placemat at a time and print it out that way too it's up to you but that is one of the editable products now the other editable product has a lot of different elements and they also come in every color so remember when you're using it only use the pieces that you need in the colors that you need every color is there just to have it available for you in case you want it so I'm going to show you these cubby name strips that I made and at the end of this video there will be a tutorial on how to add clip art into all these labels so that is going to include the name strips too so these are my rainbow uh, name strips but they come in every single color light pink dark pink light pink dark red um, all the way through to purple so you're going to have a lot of options and just like the placemat there will be a text box so you can use whatever font you want or download this font you can change the color of the font and i believe that's in the tutorial too um, it for sure is in the instructions um, you can change the size of the font so if you have a really long name you can make it fit okay so there will be a tutorial for that so you've got these cubby name strips or desk name strips or table name strips whatever you want to use those for um, i make these little names that i put on my bulletin board and it's what i display their art underneath so they can find their art products i mean projects in our um, classroom and on the classroom bulletin board so this has a pink font your font can be any color you want any color you want um, for classroom labels I have some small labels for like shoebox size containers and I have some bigger labels for bigger containers and you can add pictures so I have a lot of pictures um, you might need to go on a Google search for images and find pictures of things that I don't have and uh, save it to your photos and then you'll be able to put them in your labels. I also have these little names that I put on my alphabet line. And same thing here. You can use this font or you can change it into any font you want. It's just a PowerPoint with a text box in it. Um, so you guys those labels are great please don't hesitate to email me at teachprek101.com if you want a different size and you can't figure out how to do that yourself i'm getting close to school time so i don't have as much time as i've had before but if you'll give me a couple of days i can make the size you want and i can add it to the folder and um, that way everybody has it so everybody will get all the edits okay so that's it for the editable stuff so there's just those two things the labels and the placemats that you can personalize and add their names add clip art do anything you like all the rest of this stuff are just things where you select what you want and you print it out laminate it cut it trim it do whatever you need so i've got um a birthday kit I had these like old worn out birthday cupcakes that I've been wanting to replace for years and I've attempted some changes and I just haven't liked what I've done I finally kind of like what I've done I'm pretty excited about it so I have some bulletin board headers this one says class birthdays this one says birthdays it's on this really cute uh, cupcake sprinkle background with rainbow letters so those are two things you could use for your birthday board. Um, here is another larger header that just says class birthdays and it's got the cupcakes that are on my birthday signs and class birthdays on it. Um, what I like to do is I will show you, I've got a dry erase marker around here somewhere. So when it's somebody's birthday, I have this um, where they can all see it from my circle time area. And I will just write their name in that spot. And when the kids come in and they see that, it's really cute because the pre-K kids end up learning um, their friends' names and they don't even know they're reading. And they'll go, oh my gosh, it's Hannah's birthday today. 
So I make sure this is laminated and I use a dry erase marker and I've shown you in some of my previous videos, I love gigantic craft pom-poms. Um, the kids use them as erasers. I use them as erasers. Ta-da, you're all clean and ready to go. Every once in a while, I might need to take this down and clean it with some hand sanitizer, but there's two ways you can do this. I left this and just trimmed it. And this one, I actually cut out the cupcakes and I kind of like that better. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna use this one for my circle time area and I'm gonna use this one for the bulletin board by the door just to add even more excitement that it's somebody's birthday. Okay, then I have my monthly birthday posters and what I like to do is I like to write the date because it's already got the month on it so I just need the date <clears throat> and the name of the students that have their birthday in a particular month so we here we have January and my birthday's in January and it's on the 26th so 26 Diane so I would do everybody's day and then their name and what I like is I could write smaller if I have like tons of birthdays or if I only have one birthday, I can write it really big. And again, I can use this year after year because all I have to do is erase it. And it comes clean. So there's January. Here's what February looks like. March. April. And I'm really excited to put these up in my classroom and show you what they look like. May. June, July, August, kind of schooly, September, October, November, and December. So every month is there. There will be a picture of a bulletin board mock-up for you to see how you can display these things um, and make it work out for your class. Okay, so that's my birthday thing. Hold on, I'm gonna pop off camera for one second. Um, I also have color posters. Um, I have some old color posters and I've just also, along with the birthday things, I've just wanted something new. And I've tried a few things and haven't liked them, but I really like these new ones that I made. So I have got pink with a bunch of pink things and red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, white, gray, black, and brown. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna put these in my art area or find a place in my rug area. I don't have a ton of wall space in my room, so I'm really gonna have to work on that and figure it out. Okay, so I'll tell you another thing. I made a bunch of calendar stuff, and please, again, email me if you need something a little different. Um, I just made these how I know they're gonna work for me. The first thing I have is my calendar headers. So I've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So every month is represented but um, how I started this was I had one of those old uh, teacher created resources calendar kits. Had a polka dot background, it was really cute, but I hated the calendar numbers. So I'm gonna show you the ones I have laminated already and they're just for November. And they are leaves. So they all kind of go with the headers. And there are three colors of leaves for November. So November is leaves. I'm gonna show you what I have for the rest of the month. I have so many things to show you guys. Okay, so January is snowflakes and they're all the same. February is two different colors of hearts, so they'll make a pattern. Uh, March is shamrocks. 
April is three different colors of tulips. So we've got an ABC pattern. May is three different colors of butterflies. So we've got the ABC pattern again. June is just these beach balls. July fireworks. August, the big hot August sun. Three colors of apples for September. Three different patterns of pumpkins for October. November, I showed you the three leaves. And then I have Christmas balls for December. And I'm thinking, huh, maybe I'll change this to peppermints or something like that that's not so holiday specific. Just let me know if you need something other than these. And I do have, because I teach at Catholic school, I have re religiously significant 24th and 25th, but I also have them just plain too. So you definitely have options. Um, I am not gonna do a grid calendar this year. I'm gonna do a linear calendar. So I decided that I would make um, these days of the week little headers that will fit nicely over my uh, calendar numbers. Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. So I will have to print out, since I'm doing a linear calendar for every month, I will have to print out four to five sets of these. Another thing that I have added to put underneath the number, so the day would be on top and then this would be underneath, yesterday, today, and you guys, I have tomorrow, but it just fell on the floor and I'm not gonna pick it up. So it just looks the same. They're rainbow because I didn't want them to be the same as the day of the week. But for a linear calendar, I thought that would be fantastic. And then you can teach the concept of yesterday, today, or tomorrow. So if I am telling the class that oh, tomorrow we're gonna go on a nature hike, I can say it's gonna be this day after. Um, I did years up to 2038. So you've got the year, and then I've got these headers if you do like a focus wall. So I have month, day of the week, year, and today is. So you can arrange these any way you want. So that's it for the calendar. And then for my math center, I created some shape posters. So I've got, oh my gosh, you guys, this is hilarious. I keep losing these, I've lost circle. I do have circle and it's pink, square, triangle, rectangle, oval, heart, star, hexagon, pentagon, and octagon. So I have all those shapes that you can display any way you want and guess what i just found ta -ta -da -da, circle so they're a little bit of an anchor chart with the little pictures of like real world shapes underneath so you can say like look um a table is a rectangle the door look at our doors our door a rectangle so those are good to use for circle time stuff i'm going to show you some other little circle time helpers um this is a whole room, whole school, circle time, everything helper. These are my big three rules. Inside voice, walking feet, hands to yourself. These are the big three, the big three. You're not yelling or shouting or being crazy when you have an inside voice. When you have walking feet, you are not running, skipping, jumping, leaping, and you are safe. When you're keeping your hands to yourself, you are not pushing, pinching, hitting, or bothering anybody. So these are the big, big three, and we go over these all the time. One thing I have, oh, and you guys, this is one of those things that's in every single color. So only print the color you want. Um, all of those, I have quarter sheets that I keep on a binder ring for my circle time area that I can just grab and go, what are our three biggest rules? What are the three things that are most important in our classroom? Inside voice, walking feet, hands to yourself. So like little girl sitting, hands to herself, little boy standing, hands to himself. You're just keeping your hands to yourself, right? Um, 
Another thing I have is I have these on the rug posters in every single color and they come boy and girl. So um, you can post one or the other. I always post both because I like them to see themselves in these posters. But it has eyes are watching, listening ears, lip zipped, crisscross applesauce, um, hands in your lap. I'm not like a total crazy about the sitting thing, um, but the hands to your, it, in your lap, just when you're sitting, it makes you keep your hands to yourself, so that's the big three. I just want them sitting on your pocket, so I also made this, and this comes in every single color too. So only print what you want. Um, I've attached this with the binder ring, so I can just put this on a little hook near my circle time area, and we've got rules on the rug, which are watching eyes, listening ears, lips zipped, hands, this one I just do hands to yourself, I coordinate it with the big three, sit on your pockets, and I explain this many times during the year, if you're sitting up on your feet, the people behind you can't see, so you need to be on your pockets or on your bum, because then everyone can see around you, etc etc so guys I bring that out constantly another thing is is I make these little voice level cards and um, I use these to teach what our voice level should be and as reminders so I've got your inside talking voice look at these kids they aren't super close together but they're just having you can tell no one's shouting they're just talking just talking uh, this is whispering he's whispering he's going like so that's whispering. Oh, this means this is when you've got to raise a quiet hand. So we're not calling out, we're raising a quiet hand. And this is quiet, no voices. Time to listen to the teacher, quiet, no voices. So that is included too. You guys, I am ripping through this stuff. Um, I'm gonna show you my number of the day thing. I do this on a whiteboard but I've always wanted to have like a little board that I can just use every day and maybe have a little hook or a piece of Velcro or something where I put this. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. I write the number first and I hold this close to myself and I go, okay, I'm gonna turn this around. If you know the name of this number, you say it out loud. If not, listen to your friends, you'll learn something. Five, okay, so we've got five. Then if we've learned the letter F, I'll go, it starts with a letter that is And I show them all of this. And I go, five. Okay, so I've got the word five. And then I go, count dots with me. I'm gonna put dots in these boxes. One, two, three, four, five, so I've got one, two in this one. I've got one, two, three in this one. Hold on a minute, do I still have five dots? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I do. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then a lot of times I have them count manipulatives into a jar or whatever. And what I did with that, um, I laminated this in my five milliliter um, laminating pouches and that way it's just going to stay sturdier and go through lots of use cleans up with my pom-pom and we are good to go um, another thing that people have asked me about and requested um, I have all my center signs which are free in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. However, you don't get all of them you get here. I'm gonna show you everything that you get here. You get music, puzzles, math, science, sensory, writing, magnets, art, games, discovery, iPads, Library, Play-Doh, Dramatic Play, Literacy, 
blocks, listening, and back to music, I've also included technology and computers. So one says technology. If you have more than one set of technology, the other says computers. So that's included. Each one comes in a full sheet and a half sheet because I don't know the space you have and I actually use half sheets some places. And then you guys, I have tags for my centers, for my free choice centers. I put four of these little center necklace tags um, on hooks near my center or in that center. And they know when they come, they have to put on a tag. When they're done, they take it off and hang it back on the hooks. If there's no tags on the hooks, they need to go find another place to play. And what I use are these name badge holders that are fantastic. They are a little, they've got a little Ziploc zipper on them like that. So I double the tags, put them back to back and put them in here. Then I zip this up tight, especially for my sensory area. Cause if I have water and they're leaning over, this goes in the water and it doesn't get water in it and it doesn't get wet. Um, I use black upholstery piping um, as my cording because it does not show dirt. It is easy to tie, just knot it at the top. Um, I teach the kids all about choking hazards and how to be safe with these. And I've never, 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 never had a problem. Knock wood, right? But so that's like a little center kit that you get. Um, I have alphabet stuff. So I'm going to show you all the alphabet stuff I have. Okay, the placemats had like this animal alphabet. And I love that because when I'm doing letter of the week, I can ask them to find it on their placemat and I will tell them what color the letter is and what animal it's with. So I have got this has been printed and trimmed. This has not. I could trim this further and cut this into two places and make like a staggered alphabet line or make it in a circle or whatever you have to do. I keep it like this. I cut them all out and I make my alphabet line by um, putting them together and it just looks seamless. And this is where I put uh, their names at their first letter. I've got an alphabet line that you'll see in a video that will be at the end that has those on it. Um, I made these little alphabet guys that go on my alphabet wall that I will put uh, vocabulary words from unit vocabulary. Sometimes I have an entire unit um, alphabet that I lay on top. I had these portrait size. I have always wanted uh, landscape. So I made these in landscape and they are in uh, landscape in this kit. So they come forward to a sheet like this and you just trim them so they're equal all the way around. And so those look really nice. Another thing that I have included are my anchor charts. I have anchor charts for sale in my um, TPT store, but they only come in six colors. This comes, you know, all the way pink, red, yellow, light green, dark green, light blue, dark blue, light purple, dark purple. So we've got everything. And I've got uppercase anchor charts, and each letter is filled with things that uh, have that beginning sound. And I have a full set of lowercase anchor charts. Same, same thing. So these are great. I use these for letter of the week. I display both. Since all my alphabet wall things are lowercase because we see lowercase letters more, um, I We'll file this away at the end of letter of the week, and I start another alphabet line way, way, way up over my smart board um, as we do our letter of the week. So we build that alphabet line through the year, and the kids really, really enjoy that. Because I can always say, which letter did we learn, or which letter have we done this letter? And they look up there, and, and they know. I created something new, and I have a billion ideas for these. Um, I might use these for small group centers, but you could create another alphabet wall with these if you want. So what I did was I used my same animal. So we've got that relationship going on. They've got it on their placemat. We've got alphabet line, alphabet wall, little same animal. But I thought I like this super clear print. 
and then I like this because it's correct formation. So um, we always practice sky writing and stuff during our uh, letter of the week time during circle time. So I might just pull these out and show the kids like, do you see this? This shows us how we make this letter. I might just put this up in my letter of the week space and put the um, uppercase up at the beginning of the week so they can still see our letter of the week, but they can see how to form the letter because we will practice. So here's A, here's B. Again, it's every color um, of the rainbow. Everything coordinates and goes together. So I'm gonna move on to numbers. Um, I have a zero through 20 number line. This is what it looks like when you print it out. I trim the white around and I cut in between. Then I take the pieces that I cut and just like that alphabet wall thing I showed you, you guys, I staple them together so it looks like it's just one strip and it's not many pieces. Um, that will be in the video of these things in my classroom too. That will be at the end of this. Um, I created free zero through 10 um, number anchor charts in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Uh, but I have created uh, zero through 20. So each one is going to have the number, the number word, finger counting, tally, dice, 10 frame, dominoes, and objects to count. So this covers number sense across the board. So that is what the number one looks like. I don't wanna show you zero because zero doesn't have anything. I will show you what uh, one of the teen numbers looks like. Here we've got 13. So I've got this 10 domino and then a three. I've got the 10 frame filled out and then a three. I have the double fives and then a three. I have 10 in tallies and then a three. I have 10 tans, uh, hands, sorry, and then the three, the name 13, the 10 gumball, and then the three gumball. So this goes all the way up to 20. Um, I think these will be super useful. You can use this in conjunction with your number of the day. Um, you can save those for small groups. You could have a number sense wall. Um, another thing that I have is I have number counting uh, posters one through 10, and these are all bright and cute and fun. Um, they are great. I made these actually for my friend in the toddler classroom, and I liked them so much that I put them in my classroom, I think. No, I put the squares in my classroom, but I made these for her and I loved these so much, you guys. Here's my squares. Now the squares go up to 20. So they're all basically pretty close to the same stuff, but they just go through 20. And I'm really sorry about the glare of my ring light on this lamination. Um, but there you see, ta-da, and 20 is in clusters because it's really, really hard to put 20 things on a page. But um, I have one through 10 up in my classroom right now, and I'll show you that in a video. I'm going to take those down and... Um, put up the one through 20 because I know my pre-k toward the end of the year are ready to go past 10 at least most of them are and it's been that way every single year okay guys I'm coming on the last thing that you get or the last several things that you get um, I have a job chart a weather chart and a visual schedule in my classroom and I will have full instructions on how to assemble in print Plus, I took videos in my classroom yesterday. But these are the headers for the visual schedule and the job chart. These are the elements of the visual schedule. Email me if you need something else and I will add it. Maybe not right away, but hopefully I will get it within the week. So I've got Circle Time Library Religion Morning Message. I teach at parochial school, so I had to include some of those things. Math centers, Spanish show and tell, recess music, outside journals, story time computer, guided reading science, snack time assembly, morning work, class party, PE, end of our day, church read aloud, 
group time, lunch, art, and calendar. So there's lots and lots and lots of different things to choose from. The instructions that I give are for a seven slot schedule. You might need to double that up. You might need to do less. Um, but what I gave you was for seven. I teach half days, so I don't really go more than that. Um, for jobs, I've got a billion of them. Board eraser, sanitizer, helper, letter rest, helper, librarian. Weather helper, lunch monitor, first aid helper, chair stacker. Computer and iPad helper, paper passer, cycling monitor, pledge leader. Attendance helper, bathroom monitor, litter monitor, sweeper. Messenger, line leader, snack helper, center checker. Pet helper, teacher helper, mat helper, door holder. Substitute, caboose, plant helper, homework helper. Water fountain monitor, sink monitor, pencil monitor, calendar helper. Message board helper, table cleaner, journal helper, and light helper. So those are the jobs. Again, if there's anything I forgot that you desperately want, um, I would love to get it done for you. Okay, I also left specific instructions that are super clear on how to make my weather chart. I'm going to show you the elements right here. This is the today's weather. Um, I print, laminate, and trim all the white off. I cut on the black lines, the thin black lines, not the thick black lines. I put this in the center of my cut out black poster board. The instructions will be included. Um, I've got the sky elements, which are mostly sunny, stormy, of course, upside down. Uh, cloudy, sunny, snow, and rain windy and mostly cloudy and then this will go in the bottom corner and everything goes around it and i just like to arrange it so no two colors that are the same are next to each other so it it's really cute there's a picture of it uh, in this product um, if you watch any of my classroom setup videos or anything you're gonna see it we mark the day with uh, clothespins, we do the same thing with our visual schedule. We just move the clothespin down to show where we are in the day. Uh, the temperatures I have are super hot, hot, warm, cool, cold, freezing cold. We talk a lot about that being how it feels to our skin. What does the air feel like? And these are what does the sky look like? So we talk about how we use our five senses. We use our eyes to look up and go, huh, it's cloudy. We use our sense of touch, our skin to let us know oh it feels so so cold or so hot so this is a great thing as well so um keep watching if you want the tutorials for how to add in clip art how to do any of this stuff how to find what you want to print and that stuff they're super short but you guys that's all included for five dollars five dollars if you are shopping on a teacher pay teacher sale day, it is still $5, it is no percentage off. Um, after Labor Day, it will go up to 15 or $20, depending on if I add any more stuff to it and how much I add to it. But you will get all edits for free, all additions, all changes, everything for free in perpetuity. So if you spend $5 now and you lose something, guess what, you go to your downloads folder, and you download it again. So you can't lose anything. You can't lose your calendar pieces because guess what? They're in your computer. You downloaded them. You can't lose anything. If you have a new class, you can you know, put their names on the placemats. If you want to change your color scheme, I've given you a million options to change. Um, and hopefully this goes with any cutesy theme that you might have. It's all just fun, bright, clean, simple, rainbow, I've used it for a million years and I absolutely love it. Keep watching for the other tutorials. I have taped this so many times that if I forget something, you might see it added on on the end, but thanks so much for listening. To access your font from the folder that I gave you. So here we have our, um, where is it? Let's see, it's in downloads and it is font download instructions. I'm gonna open this up so for editable resources, download the KG Red Hands font. And if I hover the hand over this, you're, you see that it has the URL. So let's see. 
Uh, yeah, it's trying to connect to teacherspayteachers.com. Yes, I will allow it. So it's going to take me right here. You're going to download that. And you're going to see it went into downloads. Okay, I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and see I've got this KG Red Hands. Okay, so if I want to put these into my font book, I am going to double click and for me it says a version of this font is already installed so I don't have to install it. Otherwise, this would be install and you would hit install. So it shows you what it's going to look like and you will want to install it. You also have the option of um, installing the, uh, the other font, which was just the outline. It's the same font, but it's just the outline. So only the outline will be colored. So you can download both of those. But remember, this is going to go to your font book and you have to close PowerPoint and reopen it after you load it in order for it to be a usable font. Okay, so don't forget that step because that's super important. Otherwise, you won't be able to use it. So that is how you would download the font. And I think this might be my last instruction video. Nope, it's not. I have one more, guys. One more and I won't be able to do it till I'm all finished. Show you how to put the pictures um, from the JPEGs for classroom labels folder into your classroom labels. Um, I'm going to start with these because of the direction these are going. So I'm just going to show you really quick. I'm going to type in here. I'm going to type in, where's my thing? I'm going to type in crayons here. Um, I'm going to move this down. I'm going to type in scissors here. And I'm going to type in paint brushes. Okay, and that isn't spelled right. And it's too big. So I just want paint brushes and I'm gonna highlight this whole thing and I'm gonna bring this down see if that works nope still too big still too big take it to a 24 point yay paint brushes okay so I'm just gonna show you with these three so I want to insert a picture from a file I know that for me right now, this is in my iCloud drive. For you, it's going to be in your downloads. But I'm seeing this here, JPEGs for labels. I'm going to open that up. And I know that I want scissors. And I'm going to hit Command so I can get more than one thing. I want scissors, paintbrushes. And I wanted crayons, so let's see, crayons. I'm gonna insert. So do you see how, how I have these? And uh, my orientation is um, straight up and down for my pictures, but my orientation is on the side. Do you see how all these are highlighted? I can grab just one of these little um, rotating toggles and I can turn it to how I want it. And now I just want to size it to fit my space. This I know is going to fit okay. If I, uh, maybe not, I am going to, here we go. Crayons. So another thing I could do is I could make the picture bigger and to the side. On the crayons so it's just more the visual is larger and the pictures are great for the kids and I'm also a visual person 
So it is great for me. So I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to take this down to maybe a 24. And I'm going to tighten these up by using this side square. Okay. And I'm going to put crayons right there. I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to make it bigger. You know, I still am not liking this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it down. And now my crayons is bigger and I've got my picture. But then I could just print, cut these out, and the picture is part of my label. So you can do that with any of the labels. With these bigger labels, let's see. Let's add some text here. Let's say wood blocks. Boy. Colored blocks, Legos. So I'm already knowing that these are gonna to be too big, just experience is telling me. It's gonna take those to a 32, move them down to the bottom. I don't want that capitalized. I don't want that capitalized. And I'm going to take this to a 32, boop. So I'm just making the font smaller. I'm dragging the text box down. And now I'm going to go insert picture from file. And it's just going to open right up because it was already opened. Otherwise, I would have to find the folder in my downloads file again and open the folder up to find my pictures. So I know I want wood blocks, colored blocks, and Legos. So see how all these are highlighted? Insert, I'm gonna spin these so they're the correct orientation. And I am going to reduce the size to what I think I might want. Boop. Still too big. Wood blocks. Center that. Colored blocks. See how I have this white space? This is one thing I can do. I can go up here to reorder objects. Hit reorder objects. And I can just move this like this behind the colored wood blocks text. And the words are going to come up on some of that white space. So I can have the picture be larger if I like. Ta-da! So there we go. Yay! So here we have these and we don't have to change our orientation. So I'm going to go up to the text box and do magnetic letters. And I'll pull that down. And here I'll do, find my text box, magnet tiles. Let's see if I can expand these and make it fit. Yes. And it is spelled wrong according to this. So then I want to add these two pictures. So insert picture. My file is going to be open already because I never closed it in between. But if it was closed, I would have to go to my downloads, open the folder, and then pick these things. So these I don't have to change the orientation of the pictures. Just gonna make it the size I think I want it. And look at this, I can see how it's going over that T, but it's just white space. So I'm gonna reorder my objects. Boom, 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 place it behind magnetic letters. Ta-da! I am ready to go and I can print these out and I am done. So that is how you add your photos into 
your I went to my downloads folder and I opened this PDF by doing a double click now I want you to see my cursor if you see my cursor swirling around on the right side this is where you are going to find the page number I am on the first page so I am on page number one when I scroll down you'll notice the page number gets bigger so I'm gonna just go to um, a page that I might want to print so I'm gonna go through this stuff and I'm thinking I don't really want this alphabet line I like these small ones so I'm gonna go to this page oopsie and I want to go to print which is up here sorry about that I'm all over the place right here is the printer icon I want you to click on that and it is gonna say pages to print all or current I want to print the current page so I am clicking on that and then clicking on print but then I'm like, wait a minute, I kind of like this whole set. Okay, this is page 21. I'm going to make note of that. And I'm going to go to the very end. And it is page, look over here on the right, 27. So I'm going to go back up to print. And I'm going to click pages. And I want to do 21 through 27. Now I don't want anything double-sided, so I'm gonna go down here to where it says printer. Yes, I got it. Um, and I'm looking at this, da da da, double-sided is off. So I'm good, and I'll just go over here and click print, and it will print pages 21 through 27. Okay, I'm done with that. So I'm printing that alphabet right now and I'm like, I wanna print some number stuff. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm scrolling down until I get to the page that I want. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of pages in this. Oh, I want this number line. I love this number line. So I'm looking right here and this page starts at 110 I'm gonna make note of that and it ends at page 113 so I'm gonna go up to my print icon and again I'm gonna go to page and I highlight this whole thing that's just easier 110 through 113 um, and then I could go back to printer but I know my double-sided is always off so I'm just gonna go ahead and print. But just to be on the safe side, let's go make sure because, yep, double-sided is off, so I can hit cancel there and just hit print there. And it is only going to print those. Now I'm thinking I really, really, really liked some of those circle time signs. And I think that my favorite color was the light blue Oops, excuse me so I'm going to find that light blue beep, beep. boy there's a lot of pages in this I might have gone a little overboard okay ooh but look, on the way, I really like this number of the day in blue. Look, that's page 327. But if I click the print, I just have to do current page. And look, it's showing me what page it's going to print. I like this blue number of the day. So I will hit print. Okay, and I'm just canceling because I've already printed all of this stuff. Trust me. Ooh, I like this and I think that I really like the light green and I want to print I'm looking over here the big three cards which are 341 and the 
big three poster, which is 342. So I'm gonna go up here again, just like I did before, highlight this whole thing, 341 to 342, print, and I am ready to go. So that is how you go through and you only print the pages that you want. It will be a little different for the editable things, but it's basically the same thing. Just highlight what you want and hit selected slide. This one, you've got to know your page numbers over here. Now, this is my version of Adobe. You could have a completely different version. My old version did not look like this at all. It was hard for me. I don't know if you noticed I was all over the place. I haven't had to look at where a page number is yet um, in this uh, update of Adobe that I got. So um, that's why my page numbers are over here now. They used to be kind of up top. Um, so look around, find the page numbers, find your print icon. If you want to print the whole thing, go ahead and print the whole thing. But as you can see, it's 426 pages. That's a lot of pages. And you guys, I don't think I've said this in any of my videos or anything, but I print everything on cardstock unless otherwise stated. And just because it's my personal preference, I use 110 pound cardstock, but you can get lighter cardstock if you like. I just know I'm going to be teaching for a good long time and I want my stuff to last and last. And honestly, I don't have to replace anything that I've already printed and laminated unless I lose it or the kids are super destructive. So print your stuff, you'll have it forever. If you have any questions, remember to email me at teachpreK101 at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Things are getting super busy for me, my mom, her Alzheimer's taking a dive and school's coming up. So I've got a super full plate, but I promise I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. That is it. That is all the tutorials and everything else. Remember, you can always email me. Um, please do not message me through Facebook or Instagram. I rarely ever go there. So email me at teachprek101.com and I will get oops, at gmail.com. Sorry about that, you guys. But I'll get back to you um, as soon as I can. Things are picking up. School's coming up in about two and a half weeks, and I got a, I got a lot to do. So anyway, I'm so excited. I hope you guys get this little kit. Your classroom's going to look so wonderful if you do. So follow the link in the description. Um, I'm also leaving links to every single thing that I use in this product um, and just to make my classroom run a little bit better with all of this stuff. So if I've mentioned it in here, I will put a link in the descriptions, but enjoy. Thanks so much and happy back to school.